and we are diving into another series. We are diving into another series. So before we start, and before we start, um, uh, we would like to pray. And after we are pray, and uh, our Natasha will sing our theme song, and then our pastor will he will be given the platform to go ahead with the series. I mean, with what he has for us from the Lord. And I'm sure while while we are in it, others will be joining us. So um, may we pray, Elder, Elder Henemy, would you please pray for us uh, before Natasha sings the theme song? Let us pray. Our blessed Father in heaven, we are so grateful unto thee. Yeah. You have led us in the course of this week. And we have the privilege to enter onto thy rest. A rest that will enable us to acknowledge you as the creator. The rest that holistically we shall be a well people, a responsible people, so that we may live and walk the talk. It's our greatest desire to seek thee so that we may be accomplished. So the purpose of our coming here on earth will therefore be a reason always that will fill our joy, fill our heart with joy and gladness. So whatever the circumstances, we have the assurance that we should not be scared. We should not be troubled for you are coming again to take us home. So while we are about to listen to thy word, Lord, may you prepare our hearts our mind and soul, so that we may receive this word, so that our heart will be filled with joy, so that we may be able also to share it with others. We pray for our friends and well-wishers who join us. May each and every one experience thy manifestation. And so likewise, also we dedicate your servant. Lord, you, may you fill him wisdom from above, touch his lips, so that any pronounce, any pronouncement that will come to us will settle in a very good soil. Yeah. So Lord, help us. As we are in the course of studying, in the course of being under your feet, so that in our community, we will all experience your goodness and mercies. May you continue to bless each and every one as you have promised us. May this series be full of success to thy glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much, Elder Enemy. And also, I want to encourage everybody to send the link out. It's very easy to copy the link and send it out to friends. Send it out to family members, whoever you know, send it out to them. Uh, in so doing, we are, I mean, the Lord will touch their hearts and they will join us by God's grace. So, so thank you so very much, Elder Enemy. And so we'd like to ask uh, Natasha to sing the theme song, and then we'll ask uh, Pastor to go ahead and, <clears throat> and join on the platform. Natasha. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, you pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. 
Jesus is coming again. Echo with hilltops, proclaim it ye place. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Coming. Jesus is coming again. Hello, beloved. I greet us all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope the Lord is taking good care of you. I know he is because he is a God of love. And because of the love that he has for you, love that is comparable to none, I know he is taking care of us. May his name be praised. I want to welcome each and every one of us once again to our Bible lecture series that I have themed Moments of Truth. I know that you are spending time with the Lord studying his word like never before, communing with him in prayer like never before, spending time to seek his face because his word says, and you shall seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart. It is my prayer that within these few weeks, even as we seek the Lord and we seek for his truth in his word, we shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. It is on this note that I welcome each and every one once again to the Moment of Truth Bible Lecture Series. I want to say that this program runs from the third when we started up until the 24th. And by the grace of God, those who would give their lives to Christ shall enter into a new covenant with God through baptism. That is why whatever we are discussing is founded on the word of God. So that as we study the word of God, which is truth, we shall be led to know the truth about God, who himself is the embodiment of all truth through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, so that we shall also live lives of truth through the filling of the Holy Spirit, who is also called the Spirit of truth. It is my prayer that God shall reveal himself to us, that we shall encounter the truth. Now, when we encounter the truth, two things are going to happen. It is either that we live by the truth or we continue in the falsity that we are holding. But it is my prayer that we shall do the former, that we shall abide by the truth and live a life of truth, that we shall be set free through Jesus Christ, who is the truth himself. When the program started, we looked at the truth about the book of books. And that was when we, and we got to know from the Bible that though there are so many other books, the Bible is, unsurpa is, is unsurpassable. No one can compare with the Bible. No book on earth, the Quran, the Gita Veda, whatever book it is, just name it. Um, the, uh, uh, the book of the, the book of the Mormons, whatever book it is, none compares with the Bible, because the Bible is authored by God Himself. It does not have any human author, though through the Holy Spirit, God spoke His truth through forty authors. The original author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit or God Himself. And so it is a book that compares with none. 
It is a book that battles have been fought over, yet it continues to reign supreme. It is the most translated book on the face of the earth. It is the book whose prophecies are sure and definitely come to pass. It is the book that contains the truth about the man Jesus Christ, through whom we shall be saved. In other words, if you want to be saved, there is no other book that we must go to except the Bible. And it is the book that can transform us because the Bible says, and you shall know the truth. Sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. The Bible has sanctifying power. And that is why I recommend the Bible to you that study the Bible every day and you shall encounter the truth. And as the Holy Spirit dwells in us, he shall continue to help us to live the life of truth. I am talking of the book of books, which is the Bible. Besides that, we have looked about, we have looked at the truth about suffering. Suffering. All the religions in the world have their own philosophy about religion, about suffering. And we got to know that the suffering that people are facing on the face of the earth is not as a result of God. God is not the reason for their suffering, but Satan, whose name originally was Lucifer. He is the one in whom pride was found, and he has landed us in all the trouble that we are facing on the face of the earth. Someone says, but God created Lucifer. And so if someone is responsible, it is God. That is not the case because how God gave us the opportunity to choose to do right or wrong so that we are not fully automated beings like the robot. It is in the same way that he created Lucifer. And so it's behooved on Lucifer to live that life of love in obedience to the God who created him. But unfortunately, pride was found in him, and here we are. As he was thrown from heaven, he came to deceive humanity, and that is why suffering is all around us. But guess what? The one who created us, created us the one who so loves us, is right by our side. In as much as he created us with a power of choice, and we have chosen to do that which is wrong. He came to die for us, and he has assured us of his presence even in troubles. And he has also assured us that he can set us free from the suffering that we are going through because that was not his original plan. However, he has it all sorted out because of his life that he gave. And so Jesus is saying that we should come to him, all we who labor and are heavy laden with the suffering and the curse of the world and his promises, he shall give us rest. It is my prayer that we shall find rest in Jesus' name. And today we want to look at the theme, the truth about the second coming. The truth about the second coming. Can we please bow down our heads in prayer wherever we are? And so, dear Heavenly Father, you are the author of truth. You are the embodiment of truth. It is through your spirit that we shall encounter the truth. It is through your word which testifies about the man Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and life, that we shall come to know the truth. Even as we open your holy word to know the truth about your second coming, please speak to us and help us to live by the words of truth through the filling of the Holy Spirit of truth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. 
Amen. What is the truth about the second coming? Our world is overpopulated. There are over 8 billion people on the face of the globe. And it is estimated that by the, some few years to come, in less, than, in less than 30 years, we shall hit the 10 billion point. The world shall, become, shall, shall be holding 10 billion people. Overpopulation is now increasing to the extent that people are confused. Scientists are confused. The whole world is confused. So they are devising all kinds of strategies to cut down and to control overpopulation on the face of the earth. In the same way, our world is now weighed down by the global warming crisis. And so our world is not as it used to be some years ago. Today, you cannot very well predict what is going to happen based on the seasons that we have. Because through global warming, we have altered everything as far as the seasons are concerned. We have changed the natural flow of things on the face of the earth. As a result of that, many people are seeking help from elsewhere. People have now started taking their eyes off the earth. They are looking at a world beyond our world. They are looking at some space out there in space. They are looking at a heaven where they can seek for, to, to rescue themselves from what is going on in the world. The natural disasters that are happening almost always. The crisis, the wars, the economic crisis, all the problems, all the situations that the world is going through. People are seeking for rescue in a space out of space. And so Jeff Bezos, the executive chairman of Amazon, who happens to be the third wealthiest man on earth, has indicated that there is somewhere out there in space that humans can go and settle. He is aiming at some space out there in space where we can be rescued to. And he calls these the floating space colonies. He indicates that currently there, there are about six people who are out there in space living there. But we can house about three, three, about a trillion people on and in space. Can you imagine? So that he is talking about the fact that even as the world is 8 billion, over 8 billion, and we are struggling, everyone on the face of the earth can be housed in space, and yet we will have more space than enough to house us. Where are we going to be housed? And it is in these that he calls the floating space colonies. These space colonies, he believes, are some cylindrical objects that are going to be created. And then in these cylindrical objects, they are going to develop houses, mansions, office spaces, and then all that. Can you just imagine? So that he says that an individual can have a number of these. The rich people can have a number of these. Now, they have one for their offices. They have one for their farms. They have one for their, for their homes, and then all that. And he says that they shall have taxis, space taxis, so that they can be able to move from one colony to the other. It is quite interesting. It is an amazing phenomenon. And Jeff Bezos got this idea from Gerard K. O'Neill. Gerard K. O'Neill is an American physicist 
who studied at Yale. And he taught Jeff Bezos himself. It was him who in the 1970s wrote the book, The High Frontier. And he was the one who talked about human colonies in space. At the time, it was not believed, but now people are buying into this idea so that the rich people are buying space out there in space so that someday they shall be able to leave this place, to be rescued from this place to those space colonies that they are creating. Can you imagine? Very interesting. And so the people who are rich on earth are looking at hope beyond the earth, somewhere from space. But what is the truth that has to do with what they are intending doing? What is the truth about Jesus Christ and his coming? as far as the Bible tells us. Now, when we read from Titus chapter 2, verse 13, Titus chapter 2, verse 13, Paul wrote, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so Paul was talking about the fact that he is looking forward to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is looking at an invasion that is coming from outer space. And this invasion from outer space is no invasion from some, some space creatures. It is no invasion from some, uh, uh, um, some horrid beings, some beasts, that will come to destroy us. No, it is no, it is no creature that is coming to, 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 to uh, sort of uh, 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 put the world in trouble as a result of their activities. It is an invasion that represents the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so Paul calls this the blessed hope. It is the hope that we have that is blessed. And what hope is that? The glorious appearing of our great God. And so the invasion that we are looking out for from space is the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that is what Paul says, I am looking forward to. When the dead in Christ will come to life so that together we join with Jesus and then go and spend eternity with him. Paul says, this is my hope. What is that hope? The coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this hope that Paul has is anchored on what Jesus Christ himself said concerning his coming. In John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. In John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, the Bible says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus Christ speaking here. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus is about going and ending the work that he has done. He's about bringing his three and a half years of service here on earth to an end. And as he sits with his disciples, he says, don't be troubled. Don't be uh, uh, confused. Don't be uh, uh, in a state of unrest. No, rather, you believe in God. Believe in me, Jesus, also. Why? Because there are many mansions in my father's house. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus told his disciples that, yes, I am about going. And where I am going, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he says, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am there, you may also be. So Jesus Christ told all his followers, assured his followers that, 
They believing in God should believe also in him because he is going to prepare a place for us. And he says when he's done, he shall come back and take us to where he is. Jesus is telling everyone who believes in him that I shall come again. I will return the second time and I will come and take my righteous home. Jesus is talking about the fact that the world is not just going to end in gloom. Rather, it is going to end with hope, with the glorious appearing. And that is why Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, that I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. Which day? The day that he comes. And he says, not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Paul is saying that there are some people who love the appearing of the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Some people love the appearing, the invasion from outer space, which happens to be the parousia, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people love this appearing. And he says that these people who love his appearing, and he, Paul himself, would be rewarded with a crown of life on that day when Jesus comes. And this is the hope that Paul had. Jesus gave signs concerning how his coming would be. He gave signs and indicators to show how his coming was going to be. And when you read from Matthew chapter 24, all the signs have come to pass. All of the signs have come to pass. And so what is expected is the second coming of Jesus Christ. But guess what? It is one of the things that is contended in the Christian faith. That is the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so there are so many interesting views concerning the second coming of Jesus. Some say Jesus will not come again. Why? His kingdom has already come. When we read from Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, which says, um, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come in the Lord's prayer. They claim that the kingdom of God has come. And this kingdom is demonstrated in the cross and the resurrection. And so when Jesus Christ died and resurrected, that is the kingdom of God. And so there is not going to be the need of Jesus coming again. He's, they say that the future is the present. And so the parousia is not an event. What we are looking forward to the future is already here with us. The second coming is not an event, but rather it is when the whole world is made truly perfect, free from sin and all evil. In other words, they are looking at the second coming being when the earth will be free from all kinds of evil and sin. And that is why they believe that we should cooperate with God in creating a better future for all of us. And these people look at social justice and a reconstruction of the society. They believe that as we make this world more comfortable, free from sin, that is the second coming of Jesus, because his kingdom has already come. Some also believe that Jesus Christ is not coming again. And concerning the second coming, it is a tragic, misguided, and mistaken concept. They think that it is not true that Jesus will come again. Because when Jesus came the first time, he was disappointed. Jesus was disappointed because he was looking for the material representation of his kingdom, and it never came. And so Jesus was disappointed. 
and he was deceived by his eschatological hopes. In other words, according to this view, they think that Jesus, out of uh, uh, disappointment, uh, left the world and he died. And unfortunately, they're not resurrected again. That is how some people hold it. And so they think that Jesus Christ is not coming again. Yes, there are those who also believe that Jesus Christ has already come because he has come spiritually. They believe that an individual spiritual encounter is the second coming. And so whenever you have an encounter with God, like just as we are having through this uh, Bible lecture series, these evangelistic series, they believe that this spiritual encounter is the second coming of Jesus. In other words, Jesus Christ is reappearing to us over and over again through the spiritual encounters that we have. Some still claim that he has already come because the future is now. And they hold that the parousia is not an event, but a point of unity between history and God's purpose through the cross and the passion. And so when Jesus Christ died on the cross, that is the second coming of the Lord already. There, there is no need for him to come anytime again. And these views look at social reconstruction and political revolution. They are looking at how there shall be peace on earth. They are looking at how they shall be able to reconstruct the society to make it as habitable, as peaceful as can be, because that is the second coming of Christ. These are views that churches and many Christians are holding. But the question is, what does the Bible say concerning the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? You know why it is important? Jesus Christ warned about this in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. Matthew 24, 4 and 5, the Bible says, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Jesus Christ warned about this, that some false Christ will come. Many people shall say all kinds of things concerning his coming, but see that no one deceives you because the Bible contains all the truth that we need to know concerning the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so the Bible says in Matthew 24, 24, that false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the very elect. So Jesus is warning that we should be on our guard with regards to false teachings concerning his second coming. Why? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 and 14, 2 Corinthians 11, 13 and 14, the Bible says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. The devil is transforming himself into an angel of light to deceive people concerning the coming of Jesus. And that is why Jesus calls us to be worried to be careful, to pay attention, because the Bible contains the truth concerning his coming. And yet, people are using this same Bible to teach things that are not solidly founded in the Bible. But it is my prayer that even as we prayerfully study the Bible, we shall know the truth about the second coming of Christ, and the truth shall set us free. Jesus Christ mentioned in Matthew chapter 24, verse 27, some signs concerning his kingdom, concerning his coming, certain things that are the truth about his coming. Jesus says that his coming shall be visible. How? In Matthew 24, verse 27, the Bible says, for as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the sun, will the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Just as we see the lightning flashing from one point to the other, it says the coming of the Son of Man shall be visible. And that is why the Bible continues to confirm in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, that behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. Every eye will see Jesus Christ. Just as everyone sees the sun at a point in time, in the same way, every eye shall see Jesus Christ. There are not so many sons. There is only one sun, and there is only one more. Just as the sun is seen in Europe, and it is seen in Africa, and it is seen all over the face of the globe, in the same way the Bible who says the coming of the Son of Man will be a visible event so that every eye will see him. How he will do it, no one clearly knows. But he says in his word that every eye shall see him. The eye of Africans will see Jesus. The eye of Ethiopians will see Jesus. The eye of Americans will see Jesus. The eyes of Asians will see Jesus. Every eye. Emphasis. When you look at the Greek texts, the emphasis is on every eye shall see him. And that is what the Bible means to see. The Bible means to say that every eye shall see Jesus. How would it happen when Jesus Christ, after completing his task on earth, after resurrecting from the grave and walking on the face of the earth for about 40 days, he was on the Mount Olives with his disciples. And as he was speaking with his disciples, he started to, to, to ascend he was gradually being taken away from them with the clouds. Listen to how Luke puts it in Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Jesus Christ is speaking to his disciples. And gradually, he was being taken up. He was taken up until a cloud received them out of their sight. In other words, they could no longer see Jesus Christ. He was enveloped by the clouds. And while the disciples gazed at Jesus Christ, who was enraptured by the clouds of heaven, something happened. The Bible says that and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, reading from Acts chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, the Bible says, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was seeking up from you into heaven, will so in like manner as you saw him go into heaven, come back again. According to this text, these two angels who appeared to the disciples made a very, very important point. And the point was that just as you saw Jesus Christ, as you saw him physically, as you saw him being carried into the clouds until you could see him no longer. He said, they said, this same Jesus. The emphasis is on this same Jesus. In other words, it is not another Jesus. It is not another Messiah. It is not another being. It is not another prophet. It is not any human being who so professes to be Jesus Christ. It is that same Jesus 
who was taken from you into heaven. And the Bible says, will so come in like manner. And so one day, all we would realize is, Jesus Christ will be coming in the clouds of heaven. Yes, he shall be coming in all his glory and honor. Just as he was taken up, he shall come down physically, visibly, so that every eye this time will see him. Jesus' coming will be visible. But pastor, doesn't the Bible teach that Jesus Christ is going to come like a thief in the night so that we shall not see Jesus? All we will realize is that Jesus has come. The Bible says this in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. And please pay attention to the context that this statement is made. When you read from 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. This, this contest of Jesus coming like a thief is also repeated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. But when you take note and read the entirety of 2 Peter chapter 3, it is talking about the fact that the coming of Jesus Christ, the day that the coming of Jesus Christ shall be, shall be one of a surprise. You remember Jesus Christ himself mentioned that the day and hour of his coming, no one knows. No one knows when he is coming. And so his coming shall be an unannounced surprise. Just as a thief does not talk about his coming, but just bumps into their victims, in the same way, Jesus Christ's coming will be a surprise to those who are not ready, because his coming shall not be announced. It shall be an unannounced surprise, and that is the element of Jesus Christ coming like a thief in the night. He is not a thief who comes to steal, rather his coming concerning how surprising it's going to be, it's likened to the coming of a thief in the night. And that is what the Bible says. In fact, this is the bedrock of the teaching that is called rapture. So that this philosophy, this concept, this is, that is held by the dispensationalists, which is based on Edward Ivan's views on the second um, on the two phases of Jesus' return. And so Edward Ivan said that there shall be two phases of Jesus' coming. There shall be the secret phase and the physical phase. He shall he will come early to steal, to take his righteous, and then he will come the second time. In fact, he is going to come the third time, if you please. And this time, he will come physically. So the second coming, the second time that he will come, he will come secretly to take his people, to rapture the righteous. And after he has raptured the righteous, there shall be a period of seven years of tribulation. And those who would be able to stand the pressures and the persecution from the Antichrist, who shall be revealed within the seven years. After the seven years are as part, the, the teaching says that Jesus Christ will come with the saints who are who have been ruptured, and then they'll come with everyone. I mean, they'll come for the people who lived for the Lord through the seven years of tribulation and take them to heaven. And this is the, the teaching of the rapture. In fact, it was popularized by Scofield's Bible. And uh, movies and books have been written 
on this particular subject to make it one very, very popular subject among Christendom. But the truth is that the Bible does not talk about Jesus coming secretly to steal people away. Why? Because the Bible says in Luke chapter 21, verse 27, Luke 21, verse 27, that then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When Jesus is coming, it shall not be a secret affair. It shall not be something that is hidden. Rather, he is coming in the cloud of heaven with power and great glory. So one day soon, we will see Jesus coming with all the glory and all the power that he has in the clouds of heaven. Papa, so the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 40 and 41, that then two men will be in the field. Yes, two women will be grinding at a mill. One will be taken and the other left. And so the teaching of rapture appears to be true. But the question is, what does the Bible say in this context? What was the context in which this statement was made? So that we are not deceived. Remember, Jesus Christ warned about people coming out to deceive people concerning his second coming. So be careful you are not deceived. That is why we need to pay particular attention to the context in which this statement was made. Now, when you look at the context of Matthew chapter 24, verse 40, it's talking about how Jesus Christ shall ransom his people who are ready. He likens it to the coming, to the destruction of the world during the days of Noah. And so he says, just as it was in the days of Noah, they ate and drank, they married and gave in marriage until the day came when Noah and his sons, and of course, and their wives were, were, were kept in the ark and water came and rains came to destroy. He even continues to liken it to the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Where life continued, they married, they gave in marriage, they ate, they drank, they made merry. Until the angels sent Lot and his two daughters and his wife, inclusive, out of Sodom. And fire and brimstone rained to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he doesn't end there. He says, remember Lord's wife. Why? Much as Lord's wife was among those who were rescued from the fire that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, she turned back and she became a pillar of salt. And so within this contest, Jesus is establishing the fact that it is not everyone who is on earth shall be saved. In fact, just as Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, the Bible says, not everyone who calls unto me, Lord, Lord, shall be saved, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. It is not all Christians who shall be saved. In fact, not all who call themselves Christians shall be saved. It is only those who do the will of the Father in heaven. That is why he says, two people shall be on the field. Yes, two people shall be on the field. One will be taken and the other left because those who are ready for the coming of Christ shall be saved while the rest are destroyed. And that is why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, that when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, pay attention, you know, he did not say, and all the saints with him, and all the saints who were raptured to heaven with him. No, he says, and all the holy angels with him. When Jesus comes, he is coming with his angels, holy angels, 
and listen to what the Bible continues to say. It says, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Jesus will sit on the throne of his glory. The coming of Jesus shall be a glorious event. It shall be a glorious event. An event that shall be visible. An event that shall be audible. An event that shall be climatic. An event that shall be glorious. An event that Jesus, through it, would bring judgment to his people. He will sit on the throne of his glory at his coming. And so the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 31, Matthew 24, 31, and he will send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. What is Jesus' coming coming to do? What is Jesus' coming going to bring about? The angels of God would bring together those who are saved, the elects of the, of, the, of the earth, the people who lived righteously for God. Yes, these people shall be collected from the four winds of the earth, from the face of the earth, from one end of heaven to the other end. Yes, Jesus is coming. Shall be a coming that's he will separate the saved from the unsaved. It shall be a judgmental event where those who did right shall be separated from those who did wrong. Paul says, let me explain further. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, the Bible says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. And so the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be audible because it says he shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and once again, with the trumpets of God. So the coming of Christ shall be audible not only audible, and he says, and the dead in Christ will rise. Those who did right, who died for God, would come to life. They would rise. And Paul says, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. And so Paul is emphasizing the fact that this audible event shall also bring about judgment. Yes, judgment for the dead and judgment for those who are alive. Those who are dead in Christ will come to life. And then we who are alive and righteous through the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by the faith that we have in him, we shall be caught up and meet with the Lord. In fact, in the Latin Vulgate, in the Latin Bible, the language that is used there is rapir, which means to rapture. And so the time that Jesus is going to rapture his people is when he comes, when the dead in Christ and the righteous living are raptured, are caught up to meet with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven. And that is why Paul encouraged the people of the Corinth church in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 53, that behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall all be changed in a twinkling of an eye, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Paul says we shall not all sleep Yes, we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. Yes, within a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, when Jesus comes, in other words, he says, for the trumpets will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Yes, when the trumpets of the Lord, the last trumpets, the trumpets of God himself shall sound, 
The trumpet as it sounds shall bring reverberations in the ears of those who are dead. It is no wonder that Jesus Christ says in John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, that a time is coming that those who are in the grave shall hear his voice. At the trumpets of God, the dead in Christ, who would hear the voice of God, shall be raised incorruptible, and those of us who are alive, our bodies shall be transformed. And we shall be changed. Why? For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And that is why Paul happily says that, yes, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body. Hallelujah. Someday, this wordless body, this body that decays, this body that, that has an expiry date, irrespective of uh, how rich you are and how good we are taking care of this body, this body has aspiration. And it is, it is, it is, it is a lonely body. It is corruptible. But someday, we shall wear the glorious body that Jesus Christ had. We shall have the body that Jesus has, that glorious body. And that is going to happen when Jesus comes the second time. The second time when the dead in Christ come to life, as though they've not died before, and our bodies shall be transformed. The second coming shall be visible, it shall be audible, it shall not be in secrets, it shall be one that will come at a surprising time, it shall bring about judgment. Yes, that is how the, son, the coming of the Son of Man shall be according to the Bible. And the Bible says that is not just the end. For in Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 6, verse 14 and 17, Revelation chapter 6, verses 14, and 17, the Bible says, the Bible says, then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up. And every mountain and island was moved out of its place. Listen to what the Bible says. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the mighty men hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand? The climatic events that shall characterize the Son of God's coming, the climatic events that shall mark Christ's second coming, the Bible says that the, the sky will recede like a scroll. The sky will fold like a scroll when it is rolled up. And then every island and mountain would be moved out of his place. When Jesus is coming, the mountains cannot stay in place. When Jesus is coming, the islands cannot stay in shape because their creator is coming. It is just like a dog when it meets its owner and it is just wagging its tail, just wagging its tail out of excitement and cannot contain itself. When Jesus comes, the earth, the world cannot contain itself. It will shake. The mountains and the island will move out of their places. And then kings and then great and mighty men will hide themselves in caves and in rocks so that they are hidden from him who sits on the throne because his presence shall destroy all those who are wicked in our life. 
Yes, fire comes out from his very presence to destroy all those who have done wickedly. The coming of Jesus shall be a climatic event. In Revelation 16, 18, the Bible continues to say, and there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. In other words, when Jesus is coming, there shall be noises audible, and there shall be thunderings audible. There shall be lightnings, yes, visible, and there would be a great earthquake, climatic, an earthquake that has never occurred since men were on the earth. All these shall precede his coming. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, that all the tribes of the earth will mourn. All the families of the earth who did not accept and believe his coming, excusing themselves with philosophy, excusing themselves with eastern religions, excusing themselves with claims that are not in the Bible, they would mourn. And that is why Jesus Christ wants us. In Luke chapter 21, verse 36, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Everything will come to pass as Jesus has indicated. So watch and pray. In other words, be careful be prayerful, take care, so that you do not fall victim to what Jesus is talking about and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus is coming again and his presence will destroy all those who did wickedly. A quick recap. How will the coming of the Son of Man be? False Christ and false prophets will try to deceive everyone. The devil will appear as an angel of lies to deceive. Yes, the second coming will not be secret as some people hold. Yes, every eye will see Jesus' coming. Jesus is coming again and every eye will see him. All the holy angels will come with Jesus. It shall be a glorious event. Yes, it shall be audible because he will come with the loud sound of a trumpet. And then he who, he who will come, uh, he will come with the shouts of the archangel. And when he's coming with a trump of the Lord, with the voice of the archangel, the Bible says the righteous will be resurrected of course, from their graves. As people who have never died, they shall resurrect incorruptible. And the Bible says, and the righteous living will be translated to heaven without seeing death. We shall be cut up. Our bodies shall be transformed to conform to his glorious body. And then we shall be translated. We shall meet with Jesus in the skies. And all the righteous will be given immortality. Yes, Bodies that shall never die. But all of earth's ungodly people will mourn when they see Jesus. A great earthquake will destroy them. Fire from the presence of God will destroy them. And that is what the Bible says. And all the lost will perish. This is how God through his word, describes the coming of the Son of Man. This is the truth concerning the second coming of Jesus. And so Paul counsels the church in Thessalonica. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 4 and 5, he says, But brethren, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. 
You are not in darkness so that you should be surprised as at the coming of the son of man who comes like a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. In other words, you will live your lives in readiness of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not of the night nor darkness. We are not people who grow up, who grow up around in darkness. No, we are in the sons of the light. One day soon, Jesus will come. And those who have lived their lives in readiness like you and I will be able to say, behold, this is our God. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 9. Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. Hallelujah. Yes, one day we will see Jesus in the clouds of heaven. And we will see the cloud grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And then we will see light rays penetrating through these clouds. And then we will see the, 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 the trembling of mountains and of islands. And then the trumpets of God shall sound. And Jesus shall descend to take us home. I long to see this day. I long to be part of the people who are described as the sons of light. I long to be part of these people who shall receive the crown of glory that Jesus Christ himself is going to give unto us and all those who love his appearing. I long to have Jesus tell me in Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, come you blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Come. It is my prayer that I shall be part of these people. Jesus is coming again. And the Bible has clearly shown how his coming is going to be. The Bible has described how the coming of the Son of Man shall be. Let no man deceive you. There is not any alien invasion coming from anywhere. There is no, there is no uh, guarantee that the world is just going to lie and then nothing happens and it is going to get better and better and better. No. Because the Bible says, when they say peace, peace, and then sudden destruction will come. Jesus is coming again. If there is any hope beyond the skies that we can look out for, it is no invasion by aliens. It is not run, running for rescue in the space world. It is the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And my question is, are we ready to meet Jesus? This incident happened some years ago. There was an earthquake. And with this earthquake, these children who were caved into the, the debris of this story building lied dead in their various uh, 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 in, the, in the various cavities of the building that had crashed down. And down there was this boy, Albert, and his friend. Incidentally, they had not died. Albert and his friend were just sitting there, down there, caved in the earth. And there was this concrete slab that was on top of them. And so when they were rescuing people, when they were rescuing people, this boy's father came around. And then when this boy's father came around, he said, my son is not dead. He is alive. I want to get to my son. 
And the rescue worker said, oh, forget about him. Forget about it, man. Your son is dead. Possibly he's dead. So forget about him. And they were, they were doing all kinds of things to distract him. But this man said, no, my son is alive. They thought he was disillusioned by what had happened. They, he, they thought he was crazy as a result of the loss of his son. But they let him. And so he started trying to remove the debris to remove the the, the 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 broken walls and then the broken pillars. The he was trying to remove everything because he knew exactly where his son normally sat. And as he was removing, he would call out the name of his son Albert, and there was no response. He continued removing. He continued removing, and then he would call the name of his son. He was breaking in normally sat. Meanwhile, while his boy sat with his friend, trying to gasp for air, Albert told his friend, my daddy will come for us. My father will come for us. Meanwhile, his father was just out there, removing everything he could get out of the way to get to his son. And then he called the name of his son, Albert, and Albert, until one time when he called, there was a faint response from far away. Daddy. He now started calling for help. That's my son is alive. I told you my son is alive. I told you he's not dead. I told you my son is alive. They all came and they removed the concrete slab that was hanging loose on the boy's head. And when they broke into and remove the concrete slab. There they saw that little boy and his friend covered with dust, weak, but the little boy, Albert just went. Didn't I tell you that my father will come for us? Beloved, Jesus is coming for us. There is no need investing in space colonies as a way to escape from the trouble of the world. No. It could be, it could be your investment, that's okay, but that is not how we are going to be rescued because there is an invasion from outer space. It is not an alien invasion. It is Jesus. He's coming again the second time. It shall be visible, it shall be audible, it shall be climatic, it shall be, it shall be a, a, a judgmental, he'll bring about judgment to his people, it shall be a glorious event, yes, it shall be a time that he will separate the saved from the, saved, the unsaved. It shall not be in secret. And I want to be among those of whom Jesus will say, come, you who are blessed of my father. I want to ask, would you want to be part of those who are saved? Yes, you could be saved just by believing. All that it takes is to believe and live by the precepts of the word of God. He's ready to receive us. It is my prayer that he saves me. And it is my prayer that he saves you. Why don't you bow down your head wherever we are? If you want Jesus Christ to save you at his coming, why don't you bow down your head and pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we have read your word and you have revealed to us the truth concerning your second coming. Yes, your second coming. That promise that you gave unto us. You who promised and your words are yea and amen. Our prayer is that prepare us so that if we shall come today or tomorrow, because we have lived our lives in readiness, we shall be ready for your soon coming. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. I pray you that continue to reveal your truth to us. Continue to help us to understand your word so that we shall know the truth and the truth 
shall continue to set us free. Dear Father, I pray for my listening friends that let your blessings rest upon them. Let your spirit continue to abide with them and continue to lead us into all truths. For we have prayed in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much. May God continue to bless us. We shall meet tomorrow in the church house afternoon. And so make a date with us. Those of us who want, upon hearing the truth, who want to be baptized, I invite you to give your name. We shall prepare a day um, for you so that you will be baptized. A day that will be convenient for all of us. There shall be a grand baptism on the 24th. But if you want to be baptized earlier, it is possible. Just speak to us so that together we can plan about this. And remember, even as we continue to study the word of God, we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. May God bless us so that someday we shall meet in heaven when Jesus comes again. Maranatha. Maranatha.